Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you for coming today for our um, art program presentations from UMass Amherst, UMass Dartmouth, and UMass Lowell. And we have some great representatives that will tell us about their program. Uh, and then we'll have time for question and answers after. So we're just going to go in alphabetical order. And I will have everyone introduce yourselves again, starting with Amherst, then Dartmouth, and then Lowell. So thank you all for joining us today. Hi, everyone. I am uh, Jeff Casper, professor, assistant professor of design at UMass Amherst and the undergraduate program director. Super excited to be here. I teach classes in design thinking, digital fabrication, graphic design at the university. Um, I'm gonna share my screen uh, and just share, go through a few uh, bits about um, UMass Amherst. Let's see, it's always gonna be the, it's always a scary part when you, you lose all, <laughs> everything else on Zoom. So um, uh, if you're unfamiliar with UMass Amherst, um, UMass Amherst is one of the, is a, is a major research university um, in Massachusetts. It's in, um, some folks would call it the idyllic uh, Amherst uh, area of Western Massachusetts. Um, the campus is consistently ranked uh, as a, a top uh, public research university. And an amazing uh, thing about UMass Amherst is sort of its proximity to both rural life um, or small town life, Amaz uh, has a sort of amazing campus facilities and food, farms, and then also like uh, big cities like Boston and New York are not that far away. Boston's about um, an hour and a half and, and New York about three hours. So it is a really sort of dynamic place. Um, and I like to emphasize the, um, the bit about being a research university as all of our professors are working scholars and artists and really bring that uh, sort of cutting edge uh, ideas into each class um, that is taught. And that's something that we think a lot about if, in the Department of Art at UMass Amherst. Um, so I'm gonna run through a little bit about our different programs um, for our undergraduates um, and to talk a bit about our dis different uh, studio disciplines. Um, so UMass Amherst is, uh, like I said, located at a research university. We're really very um, interested and excited about interdisciplinarity within um, art practice and art learning. So we um, have a number of programs where we really focus on uh, bridging um, the gap between different media or methods in our practice and design. Um, and our, uh, our faculty and students really um, emphasize that in their, in their work. Um, we have a BA in studio art, um, a BFA in studio art, um, which has a number of uh, sort of concentrations or um, areas of focus. We also have a BFA in art education. Uh, Professor Ku is here today also with me um, and she will uh, talk a tiny bit about the art education area. Um, we also have a minor and, uh, and an exploratory track. So for folks who are interested in um, uh, maybe coming to UMass Amherst, but might want to explore humanities and fine arts in general and not dive into to art um, quite yet, um, there are options for you. Um, and so our uh, program, so folks who are interested in majoring in art uh, would either enroll in our uh, BFA program, which is tailored uh, to folks who want to become professional artists or designers. Um, we have a Bachelor of Arts degree, which is a liberal arts um, degree, where it is really a great space, a flexible degree that you can um, pair with other studies at the university if you want to major in psychology or communications um, and you also want to um, engage in art, uh, developing your art practice. The BA might be interesting for you. Uh, we also have a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Art Education, which um, is really uh, an amazing program that um, helps prepare future primary and secondu secondary school art teachers here in Massachusetts. Um, it also um, uh, uh, prepares our educators to teach in a range of contexts, community contexts, museums, um, residency programs, lots of different, um, different things. Um, so just to say our, our, um, our programs uh, across the bachelor uh, level um, are all, um, you know, folks all study together, but there's different kind of routes. In the BFA, you would pick a concentration, 
you will have more studio courses. It's more studio intensive. 65% of your credits are in studio area versus the BA, which is more, um, there, you can take more classes in other departments. Uh, the BFA also um, uh, stresses professional practices, um, you know, how to make it as an artist, um, uh, running your own studio, applying for grants, um, and, and is capped with a thesis project. Um, Art Ed, I'm going to save uh, for a couple of slides later, uh, when, and so he will talk about that. Um, and the BA also is a great thing. If you want to learn a foreign language, you want to become a scholar in um, uh, different areas of study, you might want to get a graduate degree in a field other than art, you might want to pursue a BA. <clears throat> so I'm going to just sort of go through our studio areas, and we really think we are we're a studio-based program, and we really are, um, you know, these are the spaces we're always in and we're excited to, to share them with you. Um, we have a studio area within painting, which encompasses um, uh, both uh, figurative abstract painting, different types of media um, from, you know, oil, acrylic, uh, gouache, but also different kinds of approaches, uh, conceptual approaches to painting, as well as um, uh, more traditional approaches to painting. We love uh, to hang out in our sort of brightly lit studios and um, really stress a kind of intimate education. Um, and our classes are fairly small, usually around 12 to 15 students. So our faculty really get to work with students directly. And we have a sculpture area, um, which encompasses metal, wood, um, mixed media, um, uh, installation, um, and amazing access to uh, studio facilities where you can really use um, cutting edge materials um, and machinery uh, to create works that um, really range. <clears throat> uh, we have an, a program in Intermedia, which is very um, uh, interdisciplinary. It uh, encompasses what we might traditionally consider uh, still, uh, you know, still capture or photography, as well as motion. Um, media, digital art. Many students also interested in graphic design are uh, within the intermedia area, and there's both a range of experimental forms and um, uh, studio uh, photography, experimental uh, photography. Um, you can see here there's black and white uh, photography, cyanotypes, um, you know, creating light based installations. Intermedia students do lots of things. Ceramics is one of our more um, lively. Um, studio areas, and I say lively because like folks are always in ceramic studios having fun, building community, and working on things from hand building, throwing, functional, conceptual um, ceramics, and um, lots of students across UMass Amherst take uh, ceramics classes, and I always see people with smiles on their faces, even when they have masks on, I can tell they're happy. Um, we also have a printmaking area or print media, which in, uh, encompasses um, uh, you know, methods like screen printing, block printing, lithography, um, intaglio, all different types of media, things that are photo-based. Um, our uh, printmaking staff and faculty are really amazing at also integrating digital media into um, the field. And a lot of students who even study with me in graphic design are often uh, uh, studying printmaking. Um, to sort of learn these new um, ways to merge digital media with traditional print media. <clears throat> we have an animation program. Uh, students in animation focus on uh, lots of things. This is one of the top uh, animation programs in the state. Um, and uh, it stresses, you know, stresses both foundation in uh, traditional like stop motion and hand constructed animation. Um, to um, uh, computer, you know, computer rendering and motion graphics. A lot of our students are super interested in um, graphic novels and comics as well. And a lot of thesis projects actually in animation area um, have been um, focused on games, comics, and graphic, graphic novels lately. Um, design is a new area at UMass, it's my, the area that I um, lead, which focuses on um, design as an integrated discipline that um, includes both uh, graphic design and communication, as well as um, innovative technologies and digital fabrication and thinking uh, with design methodologies um, in other contexts like community and education. <clears throat> um, so I wanted to 
um, put Sohiku on the spot here to talk a little bit about art education. And I didn't tell Sohi what slides I have, so um, it's going to be a surprise. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Sohi Ku. I'm an assistant professor of art education, a program coordinator of our ed area at UMass Amherst. Um, thank you, Jeff, for your invitation. So UMass Amherst Art Education Program, uh, BFA in our ed, provides um, two licensures, which is pretty unique. Um, so um, anyone who's interested in teaching in Massachusetts, we provide initial licensures um, in both elementary and secondary levels, which is a great option um, for your career choices. Um, this is my second semester, so we've been having a lot of changes. And one of the things that we emphasize is, is strong foundations, uh, which is pretty similar to other BFA studio majors, such as studio foundations and uh, artistry, um, professional electives and writing courses. But on top of that, we're trying to uh, revise some existing curriculum to increase more awareness on cultural um, diversities and equities. Um, so that uh, the one of the course that we are launching now is cultural diversity and emancipatory inquiries in art education. And that course not only talks about what it means to teach art in the classrooms, but um, you know, current issues and topics in both art and art education field. And um, this is a breakdown of what that um, Capstone Art Education, um, sorry, Capstone Art Education courses look like. And after students take um, these two um, introductory to art education courses, then students moved on to pre-practicum, what's called. It's sort of like a, a sort of like internship before your actual um, student teaching. So that's one semester. That's followed by a spring uh, where students will be exposed to full time. Uh, student teaching in both placements in elementary and secondary. Um, so as this is sort of just a graphic of sort of breaks down the, the process a little bit. Um, if there's anything you want to say about this, Zoe, <laughs> that you didn't already yeah, know. Uh, this is a nice surprise. So basically this was, you know, for anyone who's interested in getting the teaching licenses in visual arts, um, this is how we see it as a very simple breakdown in the state of Massachusetts. So there's a couple of different licenses, but um, our program is um, endorsed to provide initial licenses um, in elementary and secondary, like I talked about. Um, students do need to take MTEL, what's called. This is a Massachusetts state exam. Um, and students are taking like visual arts tests on some basic knowledge on art history and studio processes. And after students gain three years of full teaching in the field, um, and once you get the, the MA degree um, in our ed, then uh, you can apply for the professional licenses. So this is sort of the breakdown of the career path, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, just also wanted to add with uh, some, a, you know, sort of uh, testimonial from a student. Um, so, uh, um, so he, maybe you want to just <laughs> want to say this. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. So this is actually from Michelle, one of our senior um, who's been um, working in the, the local um, high schools and elementary schools. And we've been thinking a lot about sort of the assumptions about what is our education? Um, how do we define um, artists or art or even teaching art? There's a lot of acronyms. And this is what she sort of told us about how teaching art is not just about teaching techniques or how to make something. And oftentimes we're sort of geared towards the final products of you know, what your students might make, but it's more about the, the frameworks um, and sort of different thinking and critical thinking and all of this invisible learning outcomes and goals that the arts provide. So um, as you can see from the slide, you know, she herself was really transforming. And it's not just like you're disseminating knowledge to your students and it's, you're not, you know, looking for the hierarchical structure between teacher and students, but rather um, using through the medium of arts, you're actually growing together with your students. And not only you're teaching techniques to students, but also different ways to think and what it means to learn through arts and what are some of the, you know, um, hidden learning goals. So just wanted to that out. <laughs> Thanks, Sophie. Um, oh, I think I froze. <laughs> oh, there we are. Oh, too fast. 
Um, so I want to just close out, just show a little bit of our facilities, um, main facilities. I'm doing okay on time, right, Tom? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to just keep going. Okay. <laughs> so I just want to tell, show a little bit of our facilities at UMass Amherst. Um, our studio arts building is our main, um, uh, the main sort of core uh, building where uh, that is actually recent. It's um, around a little over 10 years. 10 years old. It's really beautiful space that uh, houses our graduate and undergraduate studios, our instructional studios in digital media, drawing, painting, photo, sculpture. It's also where our offices are. Um, this is a space that folks are like making in and outside. They're hanging out in the atrium. They're in their personal studios. And yes, we do have those. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about the types of facilities we have. Um, we have uh, all of our uh, classrooms are, are instructional studios, so they're out outfitted for the particular media that um, we learn within them. Uh, this includes shops for wood and metalwork, glaze and kiln rooms, plaster and ceramics spaces, dark rooms, computer labs, prototyping spaces. Um, we've been investing a lot of digital fabrication, including laser cutters, CNC routers, 3D printers. Um, places to work on motion and digital animation um, and um, printmaking and sort of see some, uh, take some, take a look at the behind the scenes. <clears throat> so printmaking area. Um, one of the things that folks love to see on tours and I'm, this is a virtual tour, so I have to include it is our undergraduate studios. Um, our uh, juniors and seniors are able to have their own personal studios to work in, um, which are in these beautifully lit um, loft spaces. Um, and it's a great place to go in between your classes and after um, the day ends to work. Um, and it becomes your sort of second home. <laughs> Um, and it's also where you get to work on your thesis project if you work on, if you decide to uh, pursue a thesis. Um, the Fine Arts Center is another uh, uh, focal point of not only our department, but the university in general. That's where, that's where our contemporary art museum is. It's where art galleries are, concert halls, theaters. Um, and this is where all of uh, our first year, as well as um, our, um, some art education and uh, most animation courses are um, located and we're in the middle of renovating and what should be done in the next few months uh, with a uh, entirely new uh, design, uh, de newly designed um, uh, suite that will, uh, you know, this will be all new studio spaces um, and lounge spaces for, for art students, theater students, music students. Um, and there is also new recording studios and lots of new things that we um, are so excited to, to show you. Um, and um, one of the last things I wanted to say is that we have lots of galleries uh, on campus, um, including our Museum of Contemporary Art, which features um, international contemporary exhibitions, artists from around the world who you've seen in major uh, museums are uh, come, to, um, come to campus. We also have a, a art gallery within our department um, that showcases faculty, student, and alumni work, as well as other galleries throughout the, un the university campus. And one thing that's really unique about UMass Amherst is that it's part of uh, a consortium of, of five colleges um, to include Amherst College, Mount Holyoke, Hampshire, and Smith. So you can take courses across the university as well as engage in uh, across the, the consortium in other schools, as well as engage with other galleries and museums that are in other campuses in the Pioneer Valley. And everything's really easy to get to um, with public transportation, bike or car. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to show some, some student work, folks that uh, become graphic designers um, after, uh, after going to UMass. Um, Oh, we do a lot of uh, student and alumni trips to big cities and art centers. Um, and our um, uh, graduates of our program uh, are, are active leaders in the field. This is an um, example of folks who uh, work at uh, DreamWorks Animation and, and Lucasfilms. So that's it for me. P uh, please feel free to um, reach out if you have um, like any questions about the program, I'll put my email in the chat. 
um, and I'm happy to answer questions later. And, uh, we'll move on to um, Dartmouth. That's me. Uh, everybody, my name is Jason Lodi. I am the <clears throat> Director of Recruitment, Retention, and Student Success for the College of Visual and Performing Arts at UMass Dartmouth. Uh, it, it's fun to do this with the other UMasses because I, I'm normally talking about you and now I have to like really think, uh, what am I saying? Uh, it, I'm always saying good stuff though, which is I, I think the coolest part. So you just heard from UMass Amherst. They are what I like to call our, our big brother. So they're about like 30,000 undergraduate students. We're the littlest one. We've got about 6,500 undergrads, but we're still considered a medium size university. Uh, one of the things that I love about the program that we've got is that we are the, the full-fledged art school experience, but we sit right there in the middle of a four-year liberal arts national research university. So it does give students this opportunity to expand and explore outside of those things that we're passionate about. Uh, say you wanna study creative writing, psychology, engineering, whatever it may be. It gives you that opportunity to actually kind of branch out and, and uh, expand your wings a little bit. CBPA itself, it's a, a great toy box uh, and community full of artists, designers, students, um, advisors, whoever it may be, all kind of working towards the same idea. Uh, you get that group of artists together, they all have the same sort of mindset and everything tends to go. Somehow we make these things happen, which I think is cool. Uh, one of the things that I love about uh, the fact that we are state schools is that we are still affordable. So the um, price that you see there includes room and board that is without financial aid. So 85% of our student body does apply for financial aid. They get about 90% of what they ask for. Uh, you can, as a transfer student as well, live on campus, be guaranteed housing for the remainder of your time in school. Location-wise, we're down in the South Shore of Massachusetts, so we are about 10 minutes from Horseneck Beach. However, you're there September through April, so it's not necessarily beach weather, but you can still go and enjoy if you want to. Uh, the uh, location is kind of nice. It's, uh, as, as Jeffrey was saying about Amherst, it's a nice mix between rural and urban. Dartmouth itself is quite rural, but we're connected to a small, vibrant city called New Bedford. New Bedford was rated the ninth most artistic city in the United States by the Atlantic Magazine. Back in, it, this was back in 2013. They do 10 new cities every year. Uh, and it has maintained that idea. Downtown New Bedford still has this great, vibrant art, music, and food scene, which I think is really cool. Um, we do have two campuses because of that connection to downtown New Bedford, not two campuses, but two buildings that exist for CVPA. We have a building in downtown New Bedford that allows us to have that great connection to what is an emerging small city. Uh, we've got something that's called the Idea Studio for Digital Fabrication. This is in conjunction, conjunction with our College of Engineering. Allows students the opportunity to explore things and ideas for maybe industrial design, green screen technology. Uh, we're stretching a little more now into the ideas of computer uh, game art and then computer game programming and design as well. We do have a professional faculty and staff. They are all uh, working in their profession. About 95% of our faculty and staff are full-time and tenure track. Uh, it's a really great diverse campus, which is very, very cool. Something that's nice about UMass Dartmouth. We have the Frederick Douglass Unity House on property, which is, is a fantastic opportunity for students to kind of explore. One of the things that I love to non-pandemic times, we bring in a lot of guest speakers and guest artists who are coming in to work with us, which I think is great. Or when we're not bringing them in, we're going out to see them. We're heading to Boston, we're heading to Providence, we're heading to New York City, lots of opportunities for things like that. So I did mention uh, New Bedford. Our Star Store building is in the downtown New Bedford area. This is in the heart of downtown uh, New Bedford. This is where, uh, we, we house what I like to consider like the dirty art concentrations. 
So the things that make a mess or require tools or machines or ventilation or something like that. So ceramics is housed here. Fashion design is here. Textiles uh, happen here. Interior architecture has a lighting design lab in the basement of this building. Um, sculpture happens here. Printmaking is here. There is a welding studio, a wood shop, um, a plaster studio, a wheel throwing studio, a hand building studio. Um, student studio spaces are, are throughout the building as well. Dark rooms, a dye kitchen lots of opportunity and then there's gallery spaces in here as well oh actually i forgot here's some of the the pictures of some of that stuff so you can kind of see the kiln room here some 3d printers that exist uh these are housed down in the basement we've got a digifab lab that has uh jeff was talking the same cnc router laser cutters uh 3d printing technologies looms jewelry metal smithing opportunities student studio space that you can see here nice big windows that overlook historic downtown new bedford great opportunities for students downtown new bedford also houses hosts something called aha night the second thursday of every month aha stands for art history and architecture and and downtown actually really comes to life and bustles. All of the galleries, museums, boutiques, restaurants, they all stay open early, or I'm sorry, stay open late. Uh, and everything kind of bursts out onto the streets. Of course, right now it's a little tamer, but I'm gonna go back two slides. So this little corner studio, we have converted into a performance space. And during the pandemic, uh, the performers are in the studio and we then project the sound of their spoken word, their poetry, their violin, their um, uh, steel drum band, whatever it may be out onto the street. And they actually close off the corner of Union and Purchase here so that people can be out on the street, socially distanced, listening to that stuff. Uh, the students are, the CVPA students are a really integral part of, down, of AHA night in downtown New Bedford. It's a really good time. So this is then our building on the Dartmouth campus. This is designed by noted brutalist architect Paul Rudolph. Uh, if uh, downtown New Bedford is the dirty art, then this is the clean art. So this is your things like graphic design, animation, and game art. There is a virtual reality lab on this campus, which I think is really cool. Um, all of the music is housed here. Photography is here. Illustration is here. You can have, have every opportunity also to get dirty in the lowest level of this building as well. There's another wood studio, another plaster studio. There's a foundry down there so you can melt metal down to its liquid state and cast objects. Uh, lots of opportunity here, lots of stuff um, for students to play with, create, problem solve, all that kind of stuff. Uh, lots of computer labs that are available for students, letterpress. Uh, one of the things that I really like, the sculpture dock, uh, so students are able to push their work outside onto this great concrete patio on nice days. My office also just so happens to be, it's on the third floor, but I'll, they'll push like uh, timpani or um, steel drums or something out onto a balcony and be playing and it floats up into my office, which is really, really cool. Lots of great opportunity for that sort of stuff. We've got four galleries that are open to the public. One of them exhibits work only from professional artists from around the world. And when those artists are able to, we bring them in for the opening so that they can do workshops and master classes with our, our faculty, staff, and students. One of the galleries only exhibits work from our faculty and students. Uh, one is completely student run and only exhibits student work. And then the fourth gallery kind of does a combination of all of the above as needed. Our design, um, I'm sorry, our majors in concentrations, we offer a BFA in the 10 different concentrations that you can see there. And we offer a Bachelor of Science in Interior Architecture and Design. The BFA and the Bachelor of Science, uh, as we mentioned, about 65% of your curriculum are then focused on uh, the areas of the studio where you want to study or the supporting studio. So going through specifically animation and game arts, it is a combination of the two. So you're going to study as much in the, the world of animation as you are in game art. You're going to leave this as a generalist who has a little bit of knowledge in everything so that you can be marketable out there in the job place and continue working on that game or that movie, whatever it may be. The drawing arena will work with you on creating your voice and vision 
as an artist. One of the things I love is that they take a non-drawer like me, and after a three-hour class, you've built your confidences a little bit, and you're realizing, wait a second, maybe I can do this. That's something that I loved when I took a drawing class. Fashion design is a new concentration for us, or newer concentration. You do not have to know how to sew going into this, but you are going to sew. You're also going to leave with at least two collections that will have been adjudicated on the runway by Boston area fashion professionals. The graphic design arena deals with things like branding, typography, marketing, uh, branding and identity, uh, user experience and um, user interface, uh, all the things that graphic design is. We all kind of know what it is and it goes beyond so far. Uh, illustration, similar, you can do uh, 2D, uh, I'm sorry, you can do hand rendered or digital, they will work with you as you want to go. Maybe you want to do a um, graphic novel, as was mentioned earlier. Maybe you want to do biomedical plant illustrations or something like that. Uh, they will work with you on becoming marketable for your career path. The interior architecture, again, is a Bachelor of Science degree. This will work with building codes and construction codes, uh, construction documents, lots of CAD work, as well as dealing with things like sustainability of fabrics, uh, lead certification for buildings, um, uh, color theory, uh, durability of fabrics. Like it, it, it's a um, very busy. Uh, concentration, but very active concentration with that. Integrated Studio Arts is a, a relatively newer concentration for us. This is where students who come in and don't necessarily fit the mold of any one area can find that they fit best. You can combine up to three different concentrations and work towards a capstone project that does combine all three of those areas. Maybe it is photography, graphic design, and animation, and you've got something in mind that you're working towards for that capstone project. Painting uh, works similarly to drawing where the faculty will work with you on developing your voice and vision as an artist in the media that you so choose. Uh, I do like this picture up here in the top left corner that shows you one of our student spaces in the Star Store campus. That's an undergraduate studio, which I think is kind of remarkable. Very, very cool. The photography arena teaches both analog and digital photography. Uh, you work with things like lighting, narrative, um, it is more of an artistic program than it is a commercial program. Just a, a fair warning for students there. The printmaking arena, similar. You can study etching, uh, intaglio, lithography, screen printing, lots of great facilities for printmakers. Sculpture will work with plaster or wood or metal or your whatever you want. It may be so small it fits in the palm of your hand. It may be a humongous installation that you're putting up. Great, great, great spaces and uh, facilities for the sculpture arena. We also teach classes in jewelry and metal smithing, ceramics, and textiles. However, we no longer offer BFA programs in any of those, but we do still teach classes in all three of those areas. We also have a BFA in art education or the master in uh, art education as well. And then we offer bachelor of art degrees in art history and music. The minors are in art history, film and media studies, and then almost all of the concentrations that were mentioned of BFA uh, concentrations as well. The art education degree is again a BFA because you're going to study that studio concentration as well as learning all of the educational courses that you need to. You're going to certify to teach within the state of Massachusetts through uh, the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and you're going to do a student teaching experience somewhere local to the Dartmouth area and we will work with you on setting that sort of uh, student teaching experience and practicum up. The art history uh, degree is a Bachelor of Arts degree, a uh, very active uh, art history program, which I think is, is kind of cool. Uh, it, it spans the, the whole area too, where you can learn curation, you can learn museum studies, you can learn restoration techniques, um, but you can also learn things like processing place things that are maybe a little more contemporary in the art history arena. The, uh, we offer a music program as well for any students that are interested in that. Is it, it is a Bachelor of Arts in Music. Uh, 
the also music education licensure or a minor in music. Something I like is if you come in as a visual arts student but still wanna to learn to play the guitar or play the piano, you can have that opportunity to do so. Or if you wanna sing in the chorus or you wanna play in the steel drum band. Um, we have one of two complete, now I can't remember what it's called. Uh, oh, I'm gonna skip that. Moving on. <laughs> the application process for our uh, transfer program, for the most part, the required materials are gonna be your college transcripts. If, you, if you're uh, applying with fewer than 24 college transfer credits, we're gonna want your high school transcript, maybe those photocopies of catalog pages. Uh, if you're enrolling in CVPA, which uh, it seems that these students would be, we want to see your portfolio or your music audition. Uh, most of you probably would be doing the mass transfer path anyways, though, from uh, Wachusett to UMass Dartmouth or Amherst or Lowell in this case. There is a great course equivalency guide on our website where you can put in your external school uh, and then you can put in a keyword like art and it will bring up all of the different classes that you can find and how they transfer the external courses here on the left and the UMass D equivalents on the right. Fantastic tool for that. Again, if you're using the mass transfer pathway, everything is probably going to transfer already set up for you anyways. The transfer portfolio that we wanna see is 15 pieces. Any combination of your work in the 2D, 3D photography fashion, whatever you have created. Uh, we wanna see your voice and vision as an artist and we want to see the skill set that you have obtained to this point. The reviews, individual reviews can be arranged if you contact me directly or the easiest way is to go through our slide room page at umsd.slideroom.com. Details about the portfolio and portfolio advice can be found on our website as well. If you wanna major in music, there is an audition process that you go to. Again, information on that is on the website. We do offer internships uh, at uh, CVPA. They are not required of any major, but they are encouraged. And we do have an internship coordinator within the art and design department, which will help you uh, create the internship and make sure that it happens. We've got students that are out there interning and then employed at Hasbro, CVS, Fidelity, um, the Bose Corporation, Liberty Mutual, lots of the uh, different schools in the area, and then smaller boutique things like uh, Dellen Design or Up a Baby in uh, the Upper West Side of New York City. Some information that we love to share is the idea that art and design students are employed. This is a biggie. 74% of us are out there working in our field or an arts related job with a low unemployment rate. Of course, this is pre COVID. Uh, low unemployment rate and then one of the highest in job satisfaction. We're doing this because we love what we do, not because we want to be a billionaire. You can give us a billion dollars, but we're still going to make art. Uh, again, I mentioned students can live on campus. Just some pictures of res life here. We've got a Wendy's, we've got a Starbucks, we've got a Dunkin'. Uh, lots of great opportunities for students to eat and enjoy life on campus. Uh, there is a, the athletic center is open. And then we've got 182 different clubs and activities that you can participate in. Many of them, I wanna say it's around 25 are based in the College of Visual and Performing Arts, doing things other than just studying all the time, getting out there and meeting students of diverse backgrounds but like-mindedness. We're a division three school for sports. We offer seven varsity men's teams, eight varsity women's teams, and then we've got intramurals as well. From fall 2020, they offered badminton, cornhole, frisbee golf, and wiffle ball. We've got a kick uh, frisbee golf course on our campus. Uh, the website itself, umsd.edu backslash CVPA, lots of answers to lots of questions that are there. If you visit, I encourage you to scroll all the way down on those pages. It seems like all the good information is at the bottom of the web pages. Then we're all over all the different social media sites. There are uh, faculty run pages as well as student club pages. You can see on the bottom here, we've got the GD underscore CVPA. That's the faculty version. They all look alike. The club ones are run by students. So if you want to chat with a current student, click message, and you'll be chatting with somebody from the major right then and there. Questions that you might have, you can contact me directly. Uh, we'll have time at the end of this. Or we do have a transfer admissions officer named Darcy Stevens. You can send her emails as well. So this could be you guys. Da, 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 da. 
that's my pre. Say to Ellen that I, if we could just hold off for a little bit so that if there's questions that, um, for, that people have for Jeff before he has to leave, and then we'll continue on with um, UMass Lowell, if that's okay. Um, um, so any, any questions for Jeff um, before we continue? Yeah, so I actually have a question, but it's like for all three, but seeing that Jeff's still here, I'm going to ask it. Um, just the in, intrigued by the whole the possibility of combining art and music. And so I was wondering if UMass Amherst uh, offers, you know, students that opportunity as well. Or, um, Lowell. Yes, <laughs> totally. Did you? Yes. You can several, combine several bachelor's in music, uh, several different flavors of bachelor's degrees in music and the BFA that we have. So you could dual major if you wanted to, it would take longer. So time is time becomes an issue. Got it. Thank you. Yes, similar. Um, we recommend folks who want to just want to do something like music and art to uh, focus on the, the BA in, in art, which would, um, which makes it, you can cut down your time in terms, you can pursue two BAs essentially, or um, a bachelor's in art and minor in music, something like that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Let's see, Jeff, I have a quick um, uh, um, question. Um, I, I didn't see illustration as a major at, at UMass Amherst. I wanted to ask you that. And then the other part of my question was, is there any areas that you consider your strong points at um, UMass Amherst? We do not have a, an illustration area. Um, we do, uh, we have a lot of students working in illustration across animation and painting areas. We'll occasionally have courses in that, but we don't have a concentration. Um, your second question, uh, wait, say that second question again. Sorry, I lost it. Um, <laughs> what, what do you consider your strong points of the college? I know that's a hard question. Yeah, I mean, we really, we're really a great program for folks who want to learn across disciplines and merge disciplines. That's something that we focus a lot on um, at UMass Amherst. And so if you're, you know, wanting to uh, be in a bachelor's program where you can like, you know, you know, find your media and or, you know, merge different sort of approaches, we do have a very integrated approach in that sense. Um, however, the, you know, some of our sub areas like um, animation are very popular and a lot of students um, end up working in the field. So that I could say is um, uh, a good, a good, a good sub area as well. Um, and I didn't mention, but we, uh, there we have a, a, a sister department, uh, the Arts Extension um, Service, which focuses on arts management and nonprofit uh, management, which we our students also are very engaged in. So if you we do excel in um, uh, artists and arts uh, workers who um, you know want to focus on uh, nonprofit work, you know arts education, community settings, um, you know. Uh, managing museums, that's something also that uh, a lot of students tend towards in graduation to um, the nonprofit sector. So, yeah. Right, -o. shall we get on with it then? Okay. All right. Thank you. So, I have questions for the various folks here. Do you guys, um, the students, uh, do you guys know what the Mass Compact is? You're a transfer student. Okay, Mass Compact is very important. You get an associate's degree, you need to apply for Mass Compact. It means that when you come to the university, you've already covered all your breadth of knowledge requirements from our school, and it um, it it pushes you, puts you into the program, so that you don't have to scramble around and take a bunch of extra credits that you know you thought you already took already, right? 
University programs have breadth of knowledge requirements. Ours has about 35, 36 credits, which is about 10 classes. So it really helps take care of that. And every time I get a transfer student, they don't know what that is, right? Um, to just talk about um, a degree, a BFA, so that you know the difference between a BA and a BFA. A BFA is um, minimum 20 courses in your area of focus, right? So 60 credits, it's half of your 120 credit bachelor's degree, okay? A BA is only 30 credits, that's to say 10 classes in your area. It leaves a lot of extra air for you to go and do other stuff, okay? Um, I run into these technical questions all the time, so I'm just putting it out on the table. We do have a portfolio review process. When you come to UMass Lowell, we like to meet with a transfer student right away and check and make sure where they are in the program. Sometimes there's some freshman classes that didn't get covered uh, at the original college, and then sometimes the student places into a different section than the course pathway might suggest. So if you're coming to us, call me, call Melissa, call Steve Michel, um, and one of us will look at your portfolio and help you figure out what classes you should actually be in when you come to our school, okay? We have uh, 30 freshmen a year who join us. And then when we graduate folks, we have about 45 who graduate every year. So a third of our classes, um, who our third of our graduating classes are, are transfer students, okay? Um, we uh, specialize in, we have two degrees, two BFA degrees. Um, one is in uh, art with a concentration in studio arts and another one has a concentration in animation and interactive media. Um, a concentration by accreditation standards um, means that you're taking eight courses in one specific area, right? So eight courses in painting is painting concentration, for example. Ours is a studio arts concentration, so you're getting a round robin of uh, sculpture, painting, photography, ceramics, um, figure drawing, um, upper level drawing, things like that, okay? Our um, animation interactive media program uh, is a, a course pathway in which you do 2D animation, 3D animation, um, in, uh, programming. Um, you learn how to do programming, uh, artist style programming, um, virtual reality and augmented reality. We like to get all that fun new industrial stuff in there so that you'll be better prepared when you get out. Um, and I have, I brought pictures. Does anybody wanna see pictures? You guys have been looking at a lot of pictures so far. Oh, okay. Um, and right, um, folks have been excited to talk about their facilities. We uh, have these kinds of studio facilities. Uh, the university has been pouring money into doing technical things lately, so We've got um, some brilliant computer labs. We've got, you know, these humongous animators like Cintiq tablets. We've got these uh, 3D printing machines that are pretty cool. Laser cutter that's as big as all outdoors. Um, uh, a print lab that's actually kind of the service bureau as far as print labs go. I mean, they, they turn out these huge prints um, and he can do uh, binding, vinyl cutting. Um, they can do like hot press on ceramic objects. It's, uh, it's really incredible. Um, last year when we had COVID and everybody had to close their studios down on the 17th of March thereabouts, the senior faculty, um, Melissa, um, some of the junior faculty, in fact, everybody pulled together to make a Bachelor of Fine Arts show happen anyway. It went all online um, and so Melissa put together this really incredible show on Facebook and we ended up being able to get parents who were offsite in Vietnam and um, relatives who were in California um, in Michigan and New York, all were able to attend the Facebook event at the same time. And Melissa put together this long, beautiful video of like congratulatory sequences and students talking about their experiences at school. Um, and so we're going to do it again because clearly, you know, having another on site uh, graduation is going to be, you know, eh. uh, and so this is the flag for the new one that was developed. Um, this is, uh, we have, we have a professional gallery and a student gallery. This is required guys of anybody, any art school that has uh, 
uh, national accreditation from the NASAD standard. You have to have a professional gallery and you have to have a student gallery. Um, recent uh, gallery visitors, um, Ann Gale, Jonathan Monaghan, Maura Chanel Yari, um, she was written up in Wired the same month that she showed up in our gallery. Um, Marta Menezes, who does uh, biology based artwork. So she manipulates, you know, she does stuff in CRISPR and, and um, grows weird things in her garden and gets like skin grafts back and forth <laughs> between her and her husband to create antibodies. It just, it's really fun, interesting stuff. So um, anyway, you can see here we've got things to play with, keep artists busy. Uh, so this is a person who came out of Mount Wachusett. Um, Steve, you gave me this slide. Um, I don't know, do folks over there remember Eden Burns? So. I just realized I sent you a detail, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a much larger image. I saw your preview on the left and I was like, but anyways, yeah, aiden has been making paintings and drawings with us and uh, he's been a great addition to the program. He's a, a joy to have in class. So I, I know Thomas, you know Aiden. That's great. That's great. Great yeah. to hear. Uh, um, this is uh, work by a uh, student, John Quigley, who went on to Mecca and got his master's of fine arts degree. Um, this is one of the things that came out of his master's program. Um, so the, the painters, uh, the painters are robust. Typically the painters will take a couple of years off, um, you know, fart around like artists like to do, you know, and then they usually go on and get to their master's degree and, and start producing a, um, uh, more sophisticated, uh, you know, interesting work. And they usually typically maintain and stay in the major. Um, we like to track these guys because uh, we want to know where they went. <laughs> so um, we, you know, we've got records going back 10 years, uh, 15 years of some of our majors and all the lovely stuff that they're doing. Um, this one, Melissa, you gave me this one. This is a book project, right? It's a, it's a physical object, right? Yep, this is part of the type three book project. Uh, they typically have upwards of 100 or more pages. And um, it's part of the semester work where they um, self develop a topic to make a book, a motion, a website, a self code, and um, a poster. So it's a busy semester. Um, and I'm just going to throw it down here. We have the best graphic design program in the state. Okay. Our, we're ranked statewide. We're ranked behind four private schools that have got, you know, a gazillion more mo much money than we are the highest ranked public school in graphic design. So eh. <laughs> come see our work. We're really good. Uh, Melissa, this is yours too, right? Madison, Maddie. Yep, this is a, actually a work in progress right now. This is the first time I have run this packaging and point of purchase class. So this is a part of her presentation um, for a seven product series that they're also creating a point of purchase display for. And that is due in two weeks. So there's, this is some <laughs> process work. <laughs> These this are her seven cute. products. So she built all this stuff. In. Yeah, so this was all built um, by the students in Adobe Dimension, and um, their task was to take a existing brand and pair it in a category that doesn't exist for that brand yet. So she chose Lego and um, personal hygiene to make a pandemic pack. <laughs> so that that's like, oh, it's hand lotion, vitamins, and what, soap is in there? Soap, tissues, uh, and no, not soap. Uh, hand sanitizer, face masks, and uh, vitamin gummies, hand lotion, and I forget what the small one is. Nice. Maybe <laughs> wipes, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, what do we got here? Um, I have Celso. Celso Spina, look what he's doing. Is this for type three also? Yes, this is the same type of project from the previous book. So really? just a couple yeah. of friends from him. Uh, yeah, and this is... Uh... Uh, a gorgeous, this is a really gorgeous piece of typography, uh, Melissa. Uh, one of the things I need to mention about Melissa is that when COVID happened, she called up um, uh, an associate at Adobe and made sure that our Adobe license for the students offsite happened within two weeks of the COVID closures so that we were able to actually stay in school and, and the students you know, being forced offsite had license availability uh, you know, right after um, 
so that they could continue doing their classes and finish on time. Uh, so that was, you know, we have to make these sort of miracles happen all the time, um, but we've got a lot of focus, so it's possible. Here's another POP. This is the first time we've run this class, so I'm really geeked about these. This is in process as well, due in two weeks. So <laughs> it's uh, Good for mostly her. far along. The students are also required with their POP to include media. So that screen in the middle there is uh, going to be a motion graphic. Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, all of the projects that these guys are developing at the end of the day, they have to um, go across these different um, presentation platforms, which um, ends up getting them really familiar with um, different ways of, of promoting the same product and getting out there into the world. This guy is my personal favorite. This is Marcello Lewis. He came out last year. This whole project happens to be about OCD. This guy has the best hand done typography, like drawing typography uh, that I've seen in a long, long time. Um, and this is a process book, right? Melissa, did you work with Marcello? I'm, uh, I didn't have him for senior studio, but I, I think this is just one of his uh, informational books, <laughs> like his uh, ritual, like OCD ritual books. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I love this guy. Um, they really climb into some really deep stuff on their projects. Uh, the Look, the department's small, folks. We spend a lot of time hand-holding, kind of one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, when we take trips together, there's usually it's a small population of people. We go to, you know, we go to Mass Mocha, we go to the Addison, we go to the Peabody Essex, the MFA. Um, and, you know, and typically, you know, it's, it'll be a trip of like a class, which may be 12 people, 15 people um, checking out the new stuff. Um, we arrange to get uh, as best as possible free entries um, for the students. Um, usually we fund the transportation as well. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's part of trying to make the education available and affordable for everybody. This is something that we really are concerned about. During COVID, um, the, you know, somewhere around the bottom third of the economic ladder um, are folks who couldn't afford computers who were, that were good enough to do offsite work. And so we ended up just, you know, liquidating the computer labs as much as possible and getting stuff into the hands of the students so that they could work remotely. We couldn't do anything about their Wi-Fi, So that's still been a real snag all year, but um, we got technology into their hands. We um, tried to give them machines that had built-in licenses so that they weren't gonna get pinged by Adobe this year. Um, we sent home paint um, and we had to choose non-toxic paint because we're really concerned about your health and welfare. And so we, we teach industrial hygiene along the way while we're working in the art studios. Um, so that everybody working in the studios, we've spec'd out the studios so that um, your health is upfront, right? So that you know how to read a, an SDS sheet so that you know how to work home, at home safely. Um, for all of the starter classes in the studio areas, we sent home all of the equipment for the students because we didn't want them um, farting around with stuff in their house that could hurt people, right? So, you know, to minimize dust, to minimize toxic exposure. Um, our lab manager is extremely well versed in making sure that you're working in a clean environment so that you continue doing this art for a long, long, long time. Um, and so, uh, this, this picture, this is uh, Andrew Fournier, he graduated a couple of years ago. The university bought that, which existed as this cute little tiny thing in digital lands. And they, the university paid to blow it up. They put it um, on this beautiful mounting plexiglass. Um, they gave him a handsome amount of money. Um, and uh, now some other places at our university, they saw that and liked it. So that's kind of taken off for him. He's got a new client, which is us. So. <laughs> uh, there's an art purchasing program, the BFAs. Uh, every year the university buys um, and spends a really reasonable amount of money, purchases art from the students, and then distributes, just puts it out on campus, you know, um, and it gets to hang in all these really interesting places. Um, and then typically the university is paying for mounting and things like that. And so that started to spread out. So like the the side campuses, um, the other you know um, places that we have uh, our institution, those folks also. Um, this thing is so adorable. When you see it in person, it blinks at you. It's so great. Um, 
This is during COVID. We had classes in studio during COVID because you just can't reproduce the studio experience uh, at home most of the time, right? Um, so these guys are all masked up and mounting this show. Um, this is the wet lab being occupied during COVID. We had to do enormous spacing and moving a bunch of stuff around to make sure that um, um, and doing all kinds of filter processes, air purifying, things like that, and you know, measuring the balance. I was just, uh, um, but these are the students working in studio, and this is our wet lab. You can see the Niederman arms and the, the table spaces. Um, they're doing some really, you know, this, this was a, a trial balloon that they did. Steve, I think, was this your class? Um, we have to have a socially distanced critique, right? So we have these like little islands. <laughs> I'm going back so that everybody can see, you know, what's going on in the front. Um, Steve, I, I feel like this was your class. Was this your class? I believe it's Sophie's. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, Printmaking then. Mm -hmm. This piece on the side is uh, uh, Victoria Valenti who graduated a few years ago um, and did some really, um, oftentimes the students invent new techniques um, and figure out kind of new ways of doing things. Um, and then when they do that, we do our best to get them to write like a white paper on it so we can keep track of it. Like, how did they figure this thing out? Um, you know, the, it's uh, part of a university research symposium project. So we're kind of moving along slowly to gather data about how people are uh, making their cool stuff. Um, these are some laser cut samples. Uh, these were my freshman last semester built these things. Um, it, the whole point is to teach them how to use Adobe Illustrator and to teach them how to draw with this sort of weird step back of, of you know, it's a not an immediate process. Um, and, you know, we, we bought all the Plexi so they could do their models without worrying about the cost for it. The one on the right is a 2D that sort of slots together like this. Um, and she, she did a great job trying to get that thing to match up. Um, and uh, this student just graduated in 2020 and was awarded a solo show at the Fitchburg State Gallery uh, this winter. And so we were able to watch, you know, his artist talk remotely. And then he's got another show at the Boston Sculptors in the fall. So um, solo in two person exhibitions within the first year of graduation is really unusual for art students. Um, and so, you know, hey, we're really proud of these guys. Um, this is the ceramic studio. Uh, they're working with a Kamai. We have a Kamai ceramicist named Yari Livon. He's a national treasure and what he does, traditional ceramics. Um, on the right though, that's a visiting alum who set up her own business called the Pottery Mill. And she has a patent on these things on the right hand corner. Um, they're called bats and you put them on your wheel and you squish some clay on it and it imprints. And then when you raise your dish, whatever you're making, um, you get like your signature is on there and imprinted underneath. So she just came up with this. You can see the studios are set up for social distancing. So like, you know, there's a wood frame and then there's like a plastic curtain in between. We can't make it permanent because the painting students have to go in there and make their, these enormous um, painting frames that they make. And, you know, so it has to like be flexible for accommodating everybody's needs. Um, this is a, a cartoon by Abby Taper um, and just, you know, showing off how well um, she can do Maya. Um, and this, this thing's already won some awards. We're really proud of her. Um, we like to travel. Uh, we travel usually when we go, we have a really small group with us. This one was especially small uh, to go to Italy. Um, I haven't seen the groups get above about 10 people. Um, and so uh, this is the one I did. So that's why you have pictures of it. They're in the, um, they're in St. Peter's in Rome on the left and then, you know, Venice and Pompeii. Um, we go to uh, London, um, we go to Portugal for the bio art stuff. Um, different parts of the program go to France. Um, Steve uh, took them to Israel a couple of years, you know, a little while back. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're real geeks for travel. So the faculty are all like, let's do another summer program. Where are we going next? Well, we're gonna go to Tokyo in a couple, like maybe 2022, if we can get, you know, if the travel restrictions fall back, we're gonna um, take folks to Tokyo. And um, I'm expecting that the, the gamer geeks and all the animation geeks are probably gonna pile onto that one. And we're actually gonna do it with Fitchburg State. So like, it's gonna be a, a group group project, get everybody over there. <laughs> um, 
director. It's a wonderful program at Mount Watchers. It, the classes are small. Yes, the instructors are wonderful. I just I just want to second that. Yeah, I was true. I was going to say the same thing that we are like extremely blessed at um, Mount Wachusett. and and I don't know if the younger kids realize how blessed we are, but <laughs> as uh, the older generation, we we get it how blessed we are. Mm -hmm. But you didn't mention, Ellen, though, that our large number of our studio art students are able to get a private studio mm -hmm. as well. It's a simple application process, and they just need to make an argument for why they need to have it. It could be solvents, it could be size, it could be they need privacy to work with the figure and so on. But it's a, a wonderful um, tool to have for our students. You know, it's what we understand their peers is having. So we want to do our best to stay ahead of that and um, provide as many of our students as possible that, that uh, what, we un what we understand is sort of like a requirement. It's not necessarily a privilege, but it's just important for them to develop and to mature as artists. So. Well, you and Melissa will contribute. The largest pro concentration, well, it's a degree, right? Um, is the graphic design program. It's by far the largest, has the most students. And, and within that, you get a lot of very, very talented artists. I think the studio art program is much smaller, but it's very strong, I think, because I, I think that the options that people decide to go into studio arts or they feel they're more suited to, you know, in their second year, moving on to their third, they'll go over to design or um, animation and interactive. So, I mean, there are different sizes, which will impact, I think, the, the strength that comes out of it. And animation and interactive is the youngest concentration in the program and is doing very well. I mean, I'm viewing it from a fine arts perspective, teaching painting and drawing. Um, and uh, Melissa is like, you know, one of the great faculty we have in design. So I, and I know what she guarantee what she thinks is the best program. <laughs> and, and it's true, it's really good. They have terrific teachers and it's terrific work that's made by the students. Yeah. Melissa, you want that? Yeah, our, our, um, our graphic design program is, um, the biggest of all of the, I mean, it's a, it's a major now, it's a BFA, so of all of the concentrations or majors that we have. Um, but I, I think one of the best things that I love about what our students have, um, speaking from the graphic design side of things, is the, um, the opportunity to cross over into different areas. So um, for my students to be able to jump into animation electives or um, add in more fine art electives, is really great and um, you know depending on where their areas are that they're strongest um, the graphic design field is so large that um, they're able to add in some of those extra classes to kind of carve their path um, in the field however they want so um, I'm really pleased with everybody that we work with I feel like even though we have our own departments and, and concentrations and majors. We work really well together as a team. And um, I like seeing our students cross over into different classrooms and majors. But it was really great uh, being here and um, in the UMass community. Um, so thanks for the in invitation again. And if anyone have questions about UMass Amherst art program, um, please um, let us know. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Everybody, thank you so much for your time. And sorry it went on for so long. Um, and um, but it was very informational for, for our students. So thank you. Thank you. It's great introduction thank to all of these schools. Very yep, good. Uh, nice to see you again. Yeah. Nice to yes, see you. Thank too. you. Have a good night, everybody. Bye, Emily. Bye. 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 Bye.